Hi everyone. Hi, I'm Vesna. My name is Massimo. Hello. Hi, we will be your trainers for today on this RIPE NCC webinar about RIPE Atlas. First, uh, what are we here today for? Well, we would like you to learn how to use RIPE Atlas and how to benefit from it. Then you will also have opportunity for the hands-on practice because this is going to be a really interactive webinar. And then finally, you get uh, opportunity to ask the developers and get your questions answered. Uh, not only Massimo, but we will have other developers joining us later on the chat. So before we move on, I want to explain a little bit about the way how we are going to interact today. So you will be hearing just one of us and the other one will be paying attention to the chat room. We won't be actually giving you any mic time. So all the questions that you have for us, you will have to type in on the chat. And so you can see our pictures or videos on your screen. The largest part of the screen is where we are going to show you either the slides or the browser. And then on the bottom left corner, there is a chat space. And on the bottom right corner, there, is, there are documents that you can download. So please download all of them and get the newest slides. So today we are going to show the newest slides, which have the brand new logo that was just launched this week, Monday. And um, there are some additional slides at the end because we won't have time to cover everything that we would like to tell you today. So first of all, who do we expect at this webinar? Well, we actually made this webinar not for the newbies, not for the new users of the RIPE Atlas, because we think the RIPE Atlas itself is kind of self-explanatory and the basics are easy to grasp. So we expect that you have been already using RIPE Atlas and you, for that you need the RIPE NCC access account. If you haven't been, and if you don't have an access account, please go quickly and make one. And the other thing is that you will be creating measurements today during the exercises, and for that you will need credit. So we are going to explain what that means. But if you do need some extra credits, please tell us, and we are going to give you some if you tell us that in the chat window. So let's hear from you. Oh, you don't hear anything. Let's uh, see what's happening with the mic. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm going to talk. Oh, yes. So we had the whole three minutes of silence. And now I'm going to be quiet a little bit longer uh, because I want to hear from you on the chat window what is your background so that we can adjust a little bit the uh, material that we have today either towards the network operators or towards the programmers or who knows. So please uh, tell us. Yes, I see that a lot of you are typing. I will make the slides larger again. So, we have people from Spotify. Oh, hi, I guess uh, you will be joining us for the hackathon later on. So, nice to meet you. We have a sysadmin. Very nice. Network engineer at an ISP. Network NCS admin. Oh, that's Orlin. Um, also coming to the hackathon. Daniela, another network engineer, another sysadmin. admin. So this uh, is going to be really nice information later on when we 
kind of try to grasp who are the users of Ripe Atlas. And a small ISP, so Florian is doing everything. So both sysadmin and network engineer and the programmer and everything else. I guess you make good tea. Thank you very much. Let's move on. So what are we going to cover today? Very short introduction and immediately going to creating measurements. So into multiple ways of creating the measurement and then we will also have an exercise about it. Then we'll have a short section about the monitoring systems, specifically Itzinga and how do they interact with Drive Atlas with another exercise. And finally, the real-time performance monitoring with yet another exercise. So that should fill up almost a whole hour. Then we will cover a little bit of other parts. How can you take part in the Ripe Atlas community? And if we have more time, we'll cover some newest features. Introduction to Ripe Atlas. Ripe Atlas has, since a few days ago, a Wikipedia page. And this is what it says there. Ripe Atlas is a global active measurements platform and it has been established with the goal of displaying and viewing the reachability of the internet critical infrastructure. So it is com uh, consisting of the hardware probes that are hosted by volunteers, by the community of network operators, engineers, sysadmins and end users like you guys. And all of you can get access to the data, but it's also made publicly available to everybody else. The strength of RIPE Atlas is in its coverage. So we are aiming to be a global internet measurement platform, but you can see that uh, since we started in Europe and RIPE NCC members are mostly in Europe, that's where majority of probes are. So what kind of measurements do we do? Well, all the probes do the measurements towards root name servers, and you can see those results on the internet traffic maps. Then all the probes also query a subset of the so-called anchors, and uh, your probe might be querying like five of them, and those results are regional. And then if you are hosting a probe, you also get access to doing customized measurements, which are ping, trace, route, DNS, TLS, and the newest one in uh, NTP. And actually, uh, there is even newer one, it's HTTP measurements, but they only go towards the anchors. So how many probes are there anyway? So it's almost 9,000 and 153 of them are the Ripe Atlas anchors. Any questions so far? Somebody's typing in the chat. Can't wait till it's over 9,000. Yeah, I can't wait till it's over 10,000. That's like one of the major milestones that we have. So, moving on to something more practical. How do you create a measurement? First of all, why would you do that? Well, let's say somebody is complaining, oh, I can't reach your network. And before the RIPE Atlas, you would have to go to the Nanog mailing list and ask people, oh, can you please do the pings or trace routes from that and that country to my server and send me the results? Now you can actually do it yourself. So, you um, go to RIPE Atlas and make a measurement yourself towards one of your own servers from up to 500 probes. And that's one of the use cases. The other one could be that you, you, you are multi-homed and then one of your links is maybe a little bit flaky or some other customers are complaining. So you can try the, uh, the packet loss on, on some of those links, for example, testing it with Drive Atlas or uh, you are deploying Anycast and you want to see how is the spread of the, uh, of the load to your Anycast servers uh, from different countries. So this is why would you do it and this is how, how much we are going to charge you for doing it. 
So we have introduced this system of credits that are spent on the uh, measurements that the users are uh, starting. And for example, one ping from one probe costs 10 credits. Why do we have that? So we had to find a mechanism of, of limiting the number of consecutive measurements from the system uh, in order not to overload the system and also to establish some kind of fairness. So the more you contribute to the RIPE Atlas, the, the more credits you earn and the more credits you can spend. So the limits are, for example, daily spending limits. So regardless of how many credits you actually have, you can only spend so much daily and um, you can only create a maximum number of measurement, measurements uh, yourself. So how do you earn credits? Well, you get 21,000 per day, something like that, if your probe is online 24 hours a day, because that means your probe is available to other people to perform measurements for them, and for that you get credits. If you're a RIPE NCC member, you can just request some more credits through the LIR portal. If you host a RIPE Atlas anchor, you get 10 times more credits than for the normal probe and you can also sponsor multiple probes. This was a sales talk. Now, how do you see the credits? You go to My Atlas, Credits, and there there are three tabs which show you the history of your usage, uh, some more charts, and you can also transfer credits to somebody else. So theoretically, how do you schedule the measurement? Well, you either have to be logged in or you can use the API. We are going to see how does that work. So if you're logged in, you go to My Atlas Measurements, and then you start the measurement, either using the simplest way possible with all the defaults, or you use graphical user interface with a lot of options, or you use the command line and the API. So the graphical user interface allows you to choose between creating a periodical measurement or creating a one-off measurement. Then you again have to specify the measurement type and the target, but then you can also choose the frequency, the number of probes, where are those probes coming from, and depending on the measurement type, there are all kinds of options for ping or for DNS. And uh, we have a very nicely written interactive interface that guides you through this process. Once you create a measurement, the measurement ID will be shown to you and also the API specification will be generated so that you can copy that and use it next time to create exactly the same measurement or to modify something in the command line. And so finally, uh, if you want to use application programming interface, there's a lot of documentation about it and we will need to identify you so you will have to generate some keys in advance. So this is what we are going to practice in the next exercise. Am I speaking too fast or is it okay? Type in okay if it's okay and, <laughs> and otherwise probably you didn't get a question because I'm speaking too fast. So there are some slides that are hidden, which are in your uh, PDF pack, and I should not be showing them here. So finally, when, uh, when your measurement is created, it will be shown to you on the list of measurements. And we are providing some visualizations for them. So um, there is a list of all the probes, for example, for ping. There's a list of all the probes and the color-coded um, value of the round-trip time. Then we also put them on the map so you can see where these probes are coming from, so you can visually see where the problems can be. And then there are two other very uh, powerful visualizations. One is called Seismograph and the other one is called Latency Mon. If we have time, we are going to cover that and Massimo actually wrote both. So if you have any questions, now is your chance to ask him. And so, back to you. So now we are going to do the interactive part. So the way how we prefer to do this is that I first tell you what we are going to do, then I demo it, and then you have some time to do it. So you can either just go ahead and do it, 
or you can go with me and we do it slowly together. Anytime that you have a question, please ask because Massimo is monitoring chat and he's going to answer. Also, if you need credits, just type my your email and I will add you. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So we will have three things about creating a ping measurement. So um, it's kind of limited. So we want to we want you to focus in creating a ping measurement from 10 probes only. Target you can choose yourself. The source should be your own country and the measurement should stop after two days. So first we are going to use the graphical interface and then we are going to create a key in order to be able to use API as a third step of the exercise. So in the graphical interface, everything should be very, very simple. So you click on the green uh, uh, button saying create a measurement. And then you choose all those things that I just said. And then the measurement is created and you can copy both the measurement ID somewhere on the, on the uh, clip pad or in the text file or the API compatible specification. So this is uh, the explanation, then I'm going to demo it. So we go to the browser now. I am already logged in. So you will have to log in first. Okay, let me log out and then we go through those steps all together. So in the top right corner, there is the login button. So you go to atlas.rive.net. And in the top right corner, there is a login but button. So once you are logged in, on the left hand side, there is a menu in which it says My Atlas. Let me make it a little bit larger. So in My Atlas, you go to Measurements. And then it shows you on the screen the list of either all the measurements in the system or your own measurements or the built-in measurements. So I already have quite a few. And on the top right corner, there is a green button which says create a measurement. So the step one is a definition you have to choose a type. Our task is to do the ping measurement. Then you choose a target. I always choose Belasting Dienst. Belasting Dienst. That's the tax office here in Holland. And the address family has to be IPv4 because they still don't do IPv6. And so there are all kinds of options that you can choose, but I'm not going to go to advanced options right now. And then we have a probe selection. The default is 50 probes from around the world, but I want to choose new set. And that new set uh, will be a country and then Netherlands number of probes we said 10 and that's it so the other options available here are the tags so tags are kind of descriptors for certain probes and there is a lot of system side set tags like the probe can do ipv6 so it's located behind the net and then there are the tags that you can set yourself like all the blue probes or my yeah favorite probes and so on and then the timing, it should start now, as soon as possible, and it should stop in two days. So on Saturday at one o'clock. And you can also see the measurement API compatible specification here. So you can copy it, and then you will have to supply your key later. Create my measurement. That's it. 
one measurement created. Now we give you one minute to finish your own exercise. And after one minute, you're going to check how are you doing. So I think I see all these measurements created after the belasting Dean's measurement are from you guys, probably. <laughs> Sophia Connect, I can somehow guess who it is. Soft layer, I can't. Maybe it's not you. Any questions? So there was a question, how do you choose a target? It's uh, your own choice, like wikipedia.org. Um, don't try Google because everybody's measuring towards Google. The most popular kind of news website in your country So let's check this measurement of mine. Did it already start? And how is it doing? It didn't start yet. So it might take a while. Can we move on? Are you all done with this? Because the next part of the exercise is actually quite interesting. And that is, you have to create an API key. So the people who are not done with, uh, with the ping yet, yeah, you um, don't listen to me. And the people who are done, we go first through the slides. So you go again to my Atlas API keys, create an API key. You have to choose which one. And in this case, we need an API key, which will allow you to create a new user defined measurement without being logged in through the web interface. So the API keys are used to identify you as a person who is allowed to create measurements and so that we can subtract your credits from your account. And so the, um, there are different kinds of API keys, but this, this one that we need is for allowing you to create measurements. So we go back to the web interface. We go to My Atlas, API keys, create a new key, create an API key. Permissions should be create a new user defined measurement. So that's like a third one in the drop down menu. And the label is a free text. So something that um, webinar testing key. And then if you don't specify a, a valid from, it's going to be now and if you don't specify the end date it's going to be uh, never expiring 
and enabled it is checked so you click or click on create and then you'll have one but i don't need another one because i already have a lot so uh, i will not click on create but this is how you make them any questions so now it's your turn again so you take one minute to create an api key Okay, so somebody is saying that they are done, done with the keys, very good. Now I will have to start the text editor to paste that uh, API compatible text for the next exercise. So, okay, so here we are, we have API keys. Now, you need the, the name of the key, which is on the API keys list, the first column. So the key has all this key name has all these characters and numbers and so on. This is the name of your key. So you really have to copy this from the web interface and put it in your text editor for the next part of the exercise. Okay, so going back to the slides now. What is our next task? Our next task is to create a measurement, to start a ping measurement from the command line. In order to do that, you need to know the syntax of the commands and you have to have a key. So the syntax you get from the documentation pages. And um, I did type it here on the slide, so you have to copy it from somewhere, either from the atlas documentation pages or from this slide and so you use the command called curl and then you go like content type application json blah 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 uh, target is ping.accessforall.nl or your website of choice description description is a free text type is ping and so on. So you really have to copy either this or the one that we already had created in the in the GUI, in the graphical user interface. So with that, you, you edit it first and then you put it in the terminal and that's your, um, that's your way of, of uh, invoking the, the API for creating measurements. So I'm doing that as I type. Um, I don't know if you can even see that. Not really. Well, I'm doing it in the, in the text editor. I'm editing this command. And the thing is, in order to actually make it work, it has to be one line. So that's like a very funny way of doing things. So when you are when you are done yourself, please say that in the uh, chat so that I know that uh, that you actually got it how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to try to do it and to actually show you in the terminal how it works, but it's not always easy because there is a lot of syntax syntax details to that can go wrong. Yeah. Somebody done? Yes. Very good. Okay, now let me open the terminal. Maybe I can uh, now show you how it works here. This has to be much, much bigger. Yeah, you can see it. So now this is the command. Yes. And the answer was the measurement ID. So now if I go to the list of my measurements, I should see a measurement call my first API measurement towards ping.texasforall.nl. Do I have that? My measurements? Yes. No. This is the old one from the previous webinar. Okay, let's refresh. Yes. 
How are you guys doing? Shall we take another minute? Okay, so what I can do is actually paste this in the chat. How about that? Yeah, but there is your API key. We have to change the API. Oh yeah, and then you have to change the API key. Okay, this is with my API key. Yes, now you have to disable that key. <laughs> now you can use my credit because you have my key. Okay, the next exercise for myself is to go and disable that key. Which one was it? This one. Enabled? No. No. Uh, I think Orlin has another question if you can answer maybe. Enabled? No. So. Okay, how are we doing? And this is the solution. Thanks. <laughs> okay, shall we move on? We have spent half an hour already and we still have so much to show you, even more awesome stuff. So let's move on. How is the RIPE Atlas integrated with existing monitoring systems? Now, this is what we heard as a feature request. That people were saying, yeah, this is all nice, but we already have a monitoring system. We don't want to like reinvent the wheel. We are using Nagios or Itzinga. Is there another one that, um, that you are using? Please type it in because we, we like to hear about different ones and maybe there has to be some kind of plugin written for one of the other ones. So you can actually use the Power Ripe Atlas and put it straight into your existing monitoring systems by doing these measurements. And so how does it work? It's super simple. The ping measurement, which you already created, you go to a special URL, which we call status checks, and then you put those results into Itzinga. So the status checks is uh, the RESTful API way of looking into the results of an existing ping measurement. So in this specific API call, you can define certain parameters which are then going to be used for generating alarms or alerts. So you can say, well, I want to set the threshold for the 30% of probes that have successfully received the reply of the ping that they have been sending. Or uh, you can say, well, this measurement has been going on for a year, but I'm only interested in the last month of the results. Or you can say, um, 3% of packet loss is fine, but 60% of packet loss is when I want to get the alert. So we, we have all this documented and you need to see like what is your use case for this. And so since we are not the network operators, some other operators actually told us how does this work on Itzinga. And they put all these things on the GitHub. And so they also wrote blog posts and stuff. So this is a true community work and the sharing work. And so this is uh, now like a very short introduction and now you have to do it. So we have this ping measurement to a destination that we actually control. So currently this measurement is, is doing fine, but when the, the destination becomes unreachable because we switch it off, then all of a sudden you see that the status checks uh, starts generating alerts. So 
your task currently is super simple. You just have to copy this URL and open it, open this thing in the browser and take a look at it. But actually what you can do extra is do this for your own ping measurement and see how does it look like. So let me just go to the chat and uh, type it in. And so um, if we open this in the browser, it's going to look like this. So now this is on the slides, but I'm soon going to go to the, to the browser. Um, and we have it actually open. So this is the, the status checks for this specific uh, measurement. And so you can see, I'm going to make it a bit larger, that it says alert is false. Now Massimo is going to go and switch off the destination. And so all of a sudden, all these ping measurements will not be able to reach the destination. And so um, we should, when we refresh, we should, we should see that some of them will start saying, oh, I can't reach it and the alert is true. Where it takes a while? Yeah, it can take some seconds. So, any of you guys using Itzinga or Nagios or a third thing, can you type it into the chat so that we know that you're not sleeping? Ah, there, I see. Zabbix. Hmm. Itzinga. Okay, let's see how is our probe doing. Still, no alerts. Takes a while. That's why we have to sleep. <laughs> That's why the next thing we'll show you uh, is going to be an improvement on this. Come on, Atlas. Okay, this is the problem with all the live demos and stuff. So let me see what uh, what you guys are saying. The dude. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that alerting system. Okay, so the, the thing to notice about this um, status check URL is that the fetching of the results doesn't cost any credits. So only the existing ping measurement actually costs some credits. But once you start receiving these results through different methods, we don't charge you any, anything extra. Okay, moving on. We will come back to this later when we check what's happening with, uh, with our Just destination. Time. Yeah, it takes a while. So, uh, the next section will be done by Massimo. Okay. Let me stop the sharing of my camera. Okay, let's reach. So, there we go. Can you hear me? Okay, so let's go with the streaming. So, uh, so as you saw, um, there was uh, this propagation time and one of our goal in the last period was to create something that was uh, for real, real time. So in the sense that whenever a probe sends a, a, a measurement, you are going to receive it. So what we did, we created this uh, streaming, the RIPE Atlas streaming. It's um, 
it's basically it uses a, a normal uh, um, web socket uh, based on events so you can use it also in uh, your browser you basically you can create a, a tool or a visualization uh, on web application or just a web page uh, and basically you can uh, get in real time the results uh, collected by the probes to measure your target uh, we we allow for two type of um, measurement results, uh, so two, two type of uh, string data. The first one is, of, of course, the, measure, uh, the measurement results. Uh, so the same that you saw before, just uh, in another way of uh, receiving it with the sockets. And the other, instead, is the probe connection status event. So uh, whenever a probe uh, uh, I don't know, goes online or on, offline, you are going to receive uh, a message uh, in the streaming. So um, you can use it for, uh, it was something really nice when there is some uh, big network outage because you can see how the network outage spreads in, in real time. You can monitor in real time your server performance. And uh, we had an hackathon uh, in March 2015 when basically all the members, all, all the teams uh, uh, used the, uh, the streaming because it was also easy to use and we use some and we do also some logic on our side to help you to get the result and directly use it. So you have the links here in this slide about the documentation and about the uh, some, let's say, an introduction to the streaming. So the, the documentation part is, is, is really useful, so you can even open it for the next exercise. So uh, this is an example, for example, uh, this shows the uh, probes uh, uh, um, when they go up and down. And um, basically, if, uh, for example, uh, there is your probe here and you see your probe uh, that's uh, green, you, discon you unplug your probe and after a few seconds you are going to see that your, your probe is, is red. So we can uh, try to do directly an exercise, a bit of context. So let's say that uh, you have uh, some customer that start complaining about the fact that uh, some occasionally takes uh, too long to reach your service. Uh, so, um, well, a good way of, of analyze this is to start monitoring uh, like in, in, in the place of the customer, let's say. So what you can do is to um, do a ping measurement uh, to your server from 500 probes. Uh, and you decide what you consider acceptable latency. Um, and basically, you, since it's streaming, you can reach uh, only the, the samples that are uh, passing this threshold and you can react uh, in real time or, or however, as soon as you want. Uh, so for this uh, task, for this exercise, we have a measurement ID. So uh, this measurement ID it uses the our um, uh, our server here. Uh, so um, you can set three, 30 milliseconds of threshold, um, and uh, for the minimum of the three attempt of the uh, round trip time. So let's let's see this uh, practically. So you oh, I have it open already. So now, so as you, so if you, we can see the source code, the source code is, is really easy. I can explain it in fly. So here you load the socket IO library. And here you have essentially this, uh, the highlighted part is just the, the code that you need, all the code that you need. So you say connect to Atlas streaming with the socket. And you say that you want to listen the results, and you want to uh, and and you want to listen this specific result. So this probe, this measurement ID, okay? That's that's all. The rest of this code is just to print in the console. So it's not something that you care now. So as you can see here, I can refresh it. Uh, it's going, yeah, you are going to see this, this results I receive, this one is real time, right now. And you see this average is minus one because now uh, the server is down. So now Vesna is going to uh, plug again the server and you will see uh, stuff, uh, you will see the real result. Okay. 
done. So now we will see as soon as someone will reach the server again. So in the meanwhile, the status check is uh, working now. Is uh, <laughs> because uh, well, the propagation time uh, was uh, some minutes. So now the status check says true, but now it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> because we plug it in again. So just wait. So you will see you you still uh, see some minus one result because the probe have in cache in memory uh, in the the backlog uh, this uh, these samples. Uh, so they are not new one, but now you are going to see the new one. So also the probe takes some uh, seconds to, to boot. So there we go. The first probe is 47. <laughs> no, it's not caching for live streaming. It's because uh, the probes send the messages uh, every uh, one minute from one minute to three minutes. So they group together these messages before to send it. So it's not uh, caching, I, I said the, the, wrong, the wrong term. Uh, it's uh, basically uh, an output backlog. Uh, here we go. Now you see the all the probes are um, getting, back. Uh, getting back and, and measuring the, uh, the results. So you have to consider that uh, some of the results minus one were old, so measured before we plugged in the probe. And, and also there is a, an up, well, when you connect the, when you connect the server is not up and running immediately. So there we go. So let's say that uh, for now the maximum delay that you can get from the result to the streaming is uh, maximum, maximum three minutes uh, in the worst case, but we are going to one minute now. So really the worst case is one minute. So here we go. So uh, have you done? Do you have other question? So if you don't have question and and you finish, uh, you can uh, uh, you can uh, well we can just switch to the next. Uh, Stuff. I will give uh, back the uh, video to Vesna. There is also another exercise in your free time you can do. Uh, okay, let's go here. Okay, I'll start again. The most important part of the Ripe Atlas community are users, you people who are hosting probes in homes, data centers, hackerspaces, offices. And so we have about 20,000 users by now. And uh, not all of them are active, so about 5,000 are quite active. Then there are organizations they don't only want to have a probe as a, as a source of the measurements but they also want to have the uh, target in their network and that is the 
RIPE Atlas Anchor. So the anchors are hosted by the organizations who want to invest in the infrastructure. They cost about 800 euros. It's a Sucris box with some extra memory. And so these anchors are placed um, close to the, the network infrastructure of that company. And they have to have the open firewall to allow all these measurements to come towards the anchor because we schedule a lot of measurements to the anchor as a target, but they also are used as a very stable probes that can do more measurements than the normal probe. And also, if your organization likes Stripe Atlas and if you find it useful, or if you want to place, I don't know, 300 probes within your own network, then you can become a sponsor of Stripe Atlas. And we are going to put your logo on our website and we are going to be very grateful. If you are a frequent flyer and you want to help us by bringing the probes to some conferences where you're going or to the exotic parts of the world where we can't really go, although we would like to, then you can become an ambassador of the RIPE Atlas and we'll give you some uh, extra probes. You'll get a t-shirt. Massimo has a t-shirt on him. So yeah, we have a model here. and. Uh, uh, again, we have a place on the website where we list these conferences where ambassadors go and so on. If you are a programmer or if you have friends that are programmers or developers, tell them to go to our GitHub page. You can download the code, you can contribute to the code. And uh, if you just like to write text, you can also now write uh, to the Wikipedia page of Ripe Atlas. So, since most of you are network operators, you can tell us how you're using RIPE Atlas and then we are going to post it on our blog on the RIPE Labs. And if you are a student or a researcher and you write a paper using the RIPE Atlas data, please let us know because, again, we keep a collection of these. If you want to contact us, here are all of our contact details. And since we have a little bit time left, that's great because then we can move on and uh, um, go to the next section. Uh, I think, Massimo, it's better if you come sit on my chair. Okay. And then um, you can cover it from here. Okay, let's do it. So, there we go. So this is uh, it's part of the new feature. Uh, this Latensimon is a, a new tool um, that uh, I developed in the last uh, month. So basically, uh, what it does, you can uh, monitor and compare and uh, different uh, uh, the, uh, measurement collected by different probes. So imagine that you have a specific target and it can be your website, your server, whatever. In this case, it's an anchor. And you can create a measurement where you involve, I don't know, imagine uh, 100 probes and you can group together probes uh, uh, of different country, for example. In this case, we are monitoring the uh, um, anchor in... Uh, uh, in Amsterdam, one of the anchors that we have in Amsterdam, and we are doing it from um, uh, various probe, and they are grouped together in uh, by country. We have we put six uh, on each of them. So what you see here in this case is a ping measurement. You see the three attempts, so the maximum, uh, the median, and the uh, minimum of the three ping attempts. This is the average of all the six probe. You can also monitor the single probe. So the, the, the nice part about this is that um, uh, when you open a measurement, uh, uh, this is, tries to do also an auto-grouping, so tries to understand what's the best uh, grouping for uh, your, uh, your measurement. For example, if you put in the same, if you can put different measurement ID, uh, so you can um, uh, visualize together uh, and compare together different measurements, so more than one at the same time. So you put it, and if they have, for example, different target, the grouping is by target, by default. Or if they involve different countries and the best grouping looks like to be uh, by country, it groups by country. But you can manually uh, tune this. Uh, another nice part is that you can uh, put in this visualization both uh, ping, but also trace route, uh, uh, SSL, HTTP measurement, and DNS measurement. So you can compare the latencies of, of all these uh, measurement types. So uh, for the grouping part, uh, you can, there is a, a panel here, that's uh, basically the third icon from the top here. 
and uh, with this icon uh, you can uh, for example you, you uh, get access to this panel where you can search for uh, probes the, for all the probes involved so you can search you can put the I don't know the country or the autonomous system or whatever you select some of them uh, you specify a group name and basically you end up with another of this uh, group uh, here in in the list and uh, basically that's all this allows you to the the, the axes are auto tuned and uh, the the objective of this tool is to uh, um, help you to compare uh, the uh, the various um, um, results collected by different probes the nice part is also that this is going to be it's able to uh, update itself in real time with the streaming so as soon as we have a new sample the lines are going to be updated and uh, I think that's all from uh, my side. And uh, if you have question uh, or whatever, just let me know. Now I give back Vesna. Hello, so the last five minutes, I want to introduce yet another new feature. And that is the command line interface tool set. So have you heard about this already? Anybody? Yes, no, in the chat? No, okay, yes, no, yes, okay. So this is, um, this is kind of another interface to the API. <laughs> and uh, this, the, the reason is that some of the users of the RIPE Atlas are old fashioned and they really prefer the terminal and they want to do their ping in the way that they are used to, but they just want to ask Atlas to do the ping for them. So we wrote it um, and uh, now we are asking the community to actually yeah, rewrite it basically or like help us uh, adjust it or give us feedback and so on. So it's open source, it's on GitHub and uh, in order to use it currently you have to actually download it from GitHub but we are working on um, porting it to some of the popular Unix based be uh, uh, open BSD type operating system so then it will become even easier to use it but currently you have to download it install it configure it and uh, I'm sure for you it's not a big problem and this is what you can do with them for now so you can create a measurement you can get results so a simple report uh, or just kind of a, stre a streaming result so getting the results in real time and now I have a few screenshots and examples on how does it look like. So it looks like a big black blob on your screen. But uh, basically what you do is you say RIPE Atlas measure and then the measurement type. So in this case it's a ping. So you say RIPE Atlas measure ping and the target is wikipedia.org. So then it takes the default values of 50 probes and then it starts these pings and it, and it kind of gives it back to you on the screen. There is a question, but I will move on with, uh, with this. So um, again, if you want to specify more details, you can. So you can say the probes should be a different number of probes, so 20, and they should come from a country and then the country code. Or you can go uh, into uh, they should also uh, be only probes that support type v 6 or you can uh, you can also say that it should uh, be occurring uh, with the interval and then you specify the interval you can do the same for the trace route so it's just drive atlas measure and a different measurement type it's a trace route and then uh, the number of probes and the target and this is how the output looks like for the trace route from those two probes and then you can also get the results from different measurements so if you want to search for different measurement types this is how you do that and you can also search for very specific probes coming from a certain AS number and then uh, from a certain country and you can combine all these search results so this is all described in the documentation. This is where you download the code and you can also contribute to it. 
that's all for today thank you very much we will be here for a few more minutes if you have some extra questions but the official part of the webinar is over and i'll bring back the slide which says our contact details and mm -hmm, that's somewhere here so thank you very much this was Vesna and Massimo and uh, see you in Budapest at the right meeting or in December when we will have the whole webinar dedicated uh, only to Leighton Simon and we will come up with some exercises for you to practice with Leighton Simon so um, if you are interested in that wait until 3rd of December and in the meantime bye bye I will switch the recording off bye bye